welcome to the Weekly Recap. I'm Matt Wacker. The big game is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year with a matchup between the Denver Broncos and Carolina Panthers. It is expected to become the most watched event in television history, but what do locals think about it? Lee Mentink went to Buffalo Wild Wings in Rolla to find out. I'm here with Greg. Greg, are you planning to watch the Super Bowl next weekend? I'm going to watch the Super Bowl. Yes, I am. I'm going Who are you rooting for? I'm rooting for Denver. But it's a tough one because I like Carolina and I like uh, the quarterback, Cam Newton, but I like to see uh, Peyton Manning win the Super Bowl. Well, what do you think? Who's going to win? Panthers. I'm going with the Panthers. And why is that? Because Luke Keekley, he's the best linebacker in the league. Ah, somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. Katie, do you agree with Will? Well, I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I'm going to go with the Panthers because I'm from Grove, and we're the Panthers too. Are you going to watch the Super Bowl next week? Of course. Yes, 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 yes. So you're a big football fan? Yes, I am. Yes. Who are you rooting for to win Super Bowl 50? The Broncos, of course. I'm here with Crystal, and Crystal is a Denver Broncos fan. Tell me about it. Um, I love Peyton Manning. He's awesome. Why is that? You got a little crush? Uh, maybe. He won me $100 one time, so. What? Honestly. Tell me about it. Uh, it was a pool bet, and I won $100 because he scored a touchdown at the very at the fourth quarter. It was pretty awesome. Oh, okay. Well, now we know why Crystal's going for the Broncos. Shane, so are you going to watch the Super Bowl next weekend? Yes, I'm, I'm going to, and honestly, I, I don't have a favorite team. Um, I'm going to say probably Denver will win it, but... Uh, the halftime show and the commercials, that's what it's all about. There you go, another fan of the commercials. You know, we don't have a Missouri team in the Super Bowl, so I really don't care who wins. I just want to watch the, the good stuff. So I'm an Indianapolis Colts fan. So <laughs> I'm a, it doesn't matter. So it doesn't really matter, but I'm a Peyton fan. But actually watching the, watching the last couple of playoff games, it's going to be uh, Carolina. And I believe it will be over by halftime. So. Wow. Yeah. So there you go, a strong prediction there. I think it's going to be rough on them. So it'll be a rough game. Cam Newton in a defense and offense, it's going to be up too much for Denver to overcome. What about you? Do you agree or disagree with Karen? I, of course I agree. I think uh, Denver's going to win. I like uh, Peyton Manning. I want to see his hopefully his uh, last game, and he'll ride off to the sunset, Super Bowl victory. But uh, Carolina, they're a, they're a tough team with Cam Newton. He's Superman, so it's going to be tough to beat. Right. So do you remember where you were in 1967 Super Bowl number one? I do. I was uh, at my a girlfriend's house, uh, Mary Lou Jacko, her name was, and we were making out in a, in back in one of the rooms in the house, and the television was on, and the, the Super Bowl game, I remember hearing it while we were watching it, but I don't know if I ever really watched or not. Well, I'm definitely going to be watching, Matt. How about you? Personally, I would like to see Peyton the Venerable leave as a champion, but Carolina is just way too hot right now. Panthers win 31-20. to Valentine's Day is just around the corner. If you're still unsure what to get your significant other, our Ben Gronowski is here to help. Thank you, Matt. This is the Hamilton Beach Type T96 Toaster, and although it can deliver four slices of toasted perfection in less than 30 seconds, place this on top for Valentine's Day, and it'll also deliver you a one-way ticket to the doghouse. Thankfully, there's still time. Here are a few gift ideas from us to help you make this Valentine's Day a memorable one. First, we'll start with a timeless classic, flowers. The Posey Patch at 437 Porter Wagner has just what you need. Maybe this year, instead of roses, go with a potted plant that'll bloom for years to come. Or perhaps your sweetheart is more of a sweet tooth. In this case, grab a candy bouquet instead. The best thing about flowers is they can be incorporated with many other gifts. One such gift, jewelry. In this case, your next stop should be at Zerley Pearl, located in the West Mains Plaza. Here you'll find a wide range of affordable, unique, and handmade jewelry. Shopping here will ensure a one-of-a-kind, fashion-forward accessory for your valentine. Unique items tell your loved one that you didn't just order from a catalog or a top 10 seller list. If fashion-forward isn't quite your thing, or perhaps you're shopping for a collector, then swing by the old-time flea market antique mall on 601 Washington Avenue. Your gift doesn't have to be new to be special. The best part is, you never know what you can find here with three different levels to explore. Plus, whatever happened to getting your mom a Valentine's Day gift? Maybe seeing some of these antiques have sparked your creativity. 
In that case, drive just up the square and you're going to find iDesign Memories. Not only will you meet a quick friend in Mojo, but you'll find many different ways to personalize your gift. Use your own graphic or have them create one from your idea. Apply it to a shirt, hat, hoodie. Ask them about decals, wall graphics, signs, tote bags, even koozies. The creative possibilities here are absolutely endless. If finding that gift has got you drained, or if you're looking for a way to relax with your loved one, try Callista at 1416 Southern Hills Center. Here, you can have a couple's massage with the tranquil sounds of a waterfall in the background. Or perhaps you want to treat her to a pedicure while you relax in the woods. Yep, this is a man cave in the spa just for you. Another option is to take the spa home with a wide range of products to choose from and staff willing to help with absolutely any budget. You can't go wrong here. Valentine's Day will be here before you know it. And with that, back to you, Matt. Oh, she'll like this. Preparations are underway for a solar farm on 20 acres east of the High Point Industrial Park. Board of Public Works President Nick Barrick said MC Power plans to have the solar units online sometime in the coming spring. Installation of the panels will begin this month. Rolla's solar facility will consist of over 10,000 solar panels, producing 3.2 megawatts of power, making it one of the largest in the state. Voters in Lebanon will soon have the chance to elect the city's next mayor. Three candidates have filed for the position, including incumbent Mayor Lyle Anderson. Challengers are Mayor Pro Tem and 4th Ward Councilman Bill Wheeler and local businessman Josh Ray. Lee Mentink recently talked to the candidates to find out where they stand on primary issues. What would you say is the primary objective for the city of Lebanon over the next four years? The primary objection for Lebanon is just like it is for every other municipality. We're here to provide for the comfort and safety of our citizens. We do that with our utilities. We do that with our police and fire. And uh, we have to nurture those people that provide and do for those utilities, take care of our policemen and our fire, and that will provide for the comfort and safety of our people. I see the economics of Lebanon and Laclede County being the priority that I will address. Uh, we need to be mindful that we have a lot of industry and uh, retail that stayed with us during the hard times uh, seven or eight years ago, and we need to be thankful for them. But having said that, we need to move on and start attracting more industry, more retail. I have been talking about bringing more retail to Lebanon for 10 or 15 years, and uh, with the economics like it is across the country, I think now is the time to start encouraging more retail coming to Lebanon. They hire people just like manufacturing does, and uh, we are a, a, a community that draws people to our retail, and we need to enhance that every chance we get. Well, we've got a growing population, so we want to uh, meet or exceed the needs of that growing population. So basically we need to be looking towards the, the future instead of handling just what, what issues face us right now. Okay, so in terms of the future, what do you predict is the next step to economic growth and development for the city? Uh, we've got to educate and develop our workforce, uh, training them to meet uh, the, the growing requirements of existing businesses here in town. Also, we need to uh, do so so that as those businesses expand, we're also encouraging other business to move here because we have the workforce that they need to be here. Uh, and also, I think that we need to develop more of an entrepreneurial spirit in uh, our, our citizens to where they will address uh, uh, their problems by going out and trying to solve them themselves as well. Okay, so basically economic growth through workforce development, entrepreneurship, and that kind of thing. How do you plan to bring in the the companies, the industry? Uh, we work really close with REDI, uh, R-E-D-I, uh, their economic development uh, specific. We contract out with them for the city. They've done a lot of work uh, to bring business here. Uh, so that is that is our main tool for getting out there and encouraging the businesses to, to move here. 
economic development will revolve in my mind around moving Lebanon into the 21st century. We have to move into a computer-oriented society. We want our town to have area-wide broadband, which we will either do as a utility or in a partnership with Fidelity. Technology has broad economic implications. We are not going to continue living in the kind of society that we've had for the last 150 years. Everything is going to be service and intellectually, technologically oriented. And we have to be as modern as we can be. We need to have a change of attitude at City Hall. I want my administration to have a an attitude that is uh, more comfortable for retail and manufacturing to when they start looking at uh, Lebanon as a possible uh, site for, for them to relocate. And they look at everything uh, when, they, when they look at manufacturing. You know, they look at our schools, and we have great schools. They look at our hospital, they look at our churches, and they, they look at things like our library that we're in now. So with a change of attitude at City Hall, I think we can really uh, bring some people to town to try to make the area more attractive for those industries? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh -huh. Okay, so if elected mayor in April, what are the first three things that Bill Wheeler will do for the city of Lebanon? <laughs> well, I want to uh, change the morale of our city workers more than anything. I uh, am friends with a lot of our city workers and they confide in me and they are simply not very happy and, you know, without good uh, workers in our city, uh, we can't provide any services. Uh, the city is just, we're a service giver. And without good workers, especially in the fire, in the police, and manufacturing and retail, look at that. What kind of a fire department do you have? What kind of a police department do you have? And the very first thing that I will do is sit down with the public works and the fire and the police and all of the city workers and assure them that city of Lebanon is behind them in what they're trying to do in their jobs, their individual jobs. The second thing I want to do is build a good relation with the county, with county government. I think there's a lot to be desired. Uh, there is a lot of competition between the county and the city, and that is not good for any of us. Uh, there's a lot of redundancy in what we provide for our citizens, and I want to sit down with the, uh, gov uh, the county officials and uh, see what we can do about increasing our relationship between those two entities. And the third thing, I want to sit down with the citizens and see what they want for the city. And I will have an open door policy. Uh, I think it's very important that the mayor listen to the input and I've been described as a, a good listener and uh, I want the people to tell me what they expect from the city of Lebanon. Try to steam, streamline it there. Yes. Uh, I, I want to listen to them, and I want the council to hear them. And uh, not saying that we will do each and everything that somebody asks, but I, I want people to feel comfortable talking with city officials, uh, both the mayor, the city administrator, and all the people who work for the city. And uh, that will be one of, my, one of my goals, one of the early goals that I have. What do you feel have been your most important accomplishments in your prior term as mayor? Yeah, I was asked this in an earlier interview, and what I regard as my most important accomplishment is certainly the most controversial of anything that I've done here, and that's the retention of our city administrator. Now, this is one of the smartest young men that I have ever come in contact with. And he was also, when I came here, a fairly abrasive young man. He was confident in his intelligence, but, City Council and myself have taken it on as a project 
to smooth out some of his edges and make him a better person. We have so far opted to retain rather than replace, and we've remade him in the process. What are the top three things that Josh Ray will do if elected mayor of the city of Lebanon? Well, I think accountability is, is the theme for the first three things I'm, I'm planning on doing. Uh, first is to set up uh, uh, monthly meetings with kind of a revolving door of, of uh, interest. Uh, every third month, I'd like to have a town hall meeting. Um, of those, uh, you know, one month we, we look at manufacturers, one month we look at maybe nonprofits, and then uh, have a town hall meeting and tie all that together to where I can give an update to the citizens at least once per quarter, let them know what we're going to do. Uh, secondly, uh, along the same lines as the accountability is to set up sort of a grade card for uh, our city administration, uh, make sure that they're on task and that they're able to be evaluated when they're going off the rails so we meet these problems earlier. Uh, thirdly, I, I would like to encourage more citizens to get involved. So uh, I'm looking to fill all vacant positions on boards and committees and then evaluate them and make sure that they're able to do uh, their job efficiently as well. Okay, thank you. Josh Ray, mayoral candidate here in Lebanon, Missouri, Matt, back to you. The election takes place in April. January 31st marked the last day for Rolla's Pizza Inn. According to owner Dennis Schaefer, the rising price of cheese, along with personal health issues, were the catalysts behind the store's closure. Schaefer joined Pizza Inn in 1994 with the opening of the Salem location. That store will remain in business for the time being. 20-year-old Hunter Park of Lake St. Louis has pled not guilty to charges of making a terrorist threat. Park allegedly made threatening remarks against the University of Missouri in Columbia on the social media app Yik Yak on November 10th of last year. Park is currently under house arrest. A 54-year-old Rolla man is facing charges following an auto accident in Salem. According to police, Stephen McCarter was driving under the influence on East Center Street when his vehicle hit a utility pole. McCarter initially fled the scene on foot, leaving his passenger behind. Police arrested McCarter a short time later. Breathalyzer tests revealed a blood alcohol content level over three times the legal limit. McCarter is being charged with driving while intoxicated, second-degree assault, felonious restraint, leaving the scene of a motor vehicle accident, and first-degree property damage. McCarter has two prior DWI convictions on his record. A dog was reunited with his owners last week. Aussie went missing on Labor Day of last year during a camping trip with his family. Missouri S&T students at the Pi Kappa Alpha fraternity found the dog on January 18th. After failing to find his owners on Facebook, they turned the dog over to the Rolla Animal Shelter. The shelter was able to locate the pet's owners through a PetLink tracking chip. The West Plains Public Library Foundation held their 11th annual chili cook-off. We sent Ben Granowski to learn more about the event, its sponsors, and of course, the Chili. The Civic Center here in West Plains was the place to be Saturday night as local restaurants, families, businesses, and even a few pirates came together to present their tasty chilies to the community. I was fortunate enough to speak with many of them about their chili and their sponsors. Our faculty and staff have an annual chili cook-off on campus, and the winning recipe is entered in the citywide chili cook-off. It's the same recipe we've used forever. My family's kind of, my brother owns a restaurant and we've always cooked. My mom's an old school cook like most people's moms are. And we just kind of came up with an ingredient that we liked and people seem to like it. So. Research and some wonderful ideas. <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah. of it was personal input. We just went to the grocery store and said, hey, this looks good, this looks good. I literally picked it out last night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's that's honesty. We had kind of a basic idea of where to go, but when you're making this much chili, you don't know how, what recipe to use. You just have to keep adding more stuff. Because who makes six gallons of chili at a time? That's a very good point. It all just depends on the mixture. And some people like hot chili. Some people do not like hot chili. I personally like hot chili, so 
it's all personal preference and all over the board, so random shot, man. I, I'm definitely the hot and spicy. I like the VFW chili. It's not going to like me later, but I really <laughs> like the hot stuff. I like the hot and spicy. So it's, it's yeah, I like, uh, I like it hot. I really do. I kind of like the sweet and savory with a little bit of spicy. Uh, I like the savory and, and a little bit of spice. So I would say balance. You're striving for balance. Investing in our future, it's vote yes for Proposition 1 um, for April 5th ballot, and it is for West Plains R7 School District. We're doing some additions to the high school, adding a new high school, changing some things around, and it's going to be a great investment for our community, for our kids. Ozarks Medical Center has always been a part of this community since 1959 and we try to support things that are going to bring the community forward and a strong public library is one of the most important things that a community can have. Tell me, is there anything really going to be uh, coming up or happening at the college that we need to be aware about? Uh, there's always things coming up at the college. Uh, the next thing community-wide is our February film series. There's a show each week and they're free to the public. By the end of the night, I learned that this was the largest cook-off yet, and folks were already making plans for next year. To find out more about the results of the cook-off, or the library foundation itself, you can visit the West Plains Public Library at 750 West Broadway. That's all for now. Join me next week for another edition of the Weekly Recap. Thanks for watching.